Welcome everybody. Welcome uh, to SophiaTutorial.com. Now, before I actually go forward and uh, tell you about the various components and features of SOAP UI, what I want to do right, right now is to inform you and to make you understand what a web service is. Fine. Before I jump over to SOAP UI, all right. So let's go forward and make a simple example on a web service, right? Uh, suppose uh, you have, you are a customer out here. I'll give you a simple practical example. You as a customer out here, you are having an HSBC ATM card with you. Fine. You visit a bank, you visit a bank ATM and the bank is actually a city bank ATM. Right. So now what you want to do, you want to insert the HSBC ATM card into the City Bank ATM and withdraw money. You have a card from a different bank and the ATM is of the different bank. So what will uh, City Bank do? When you insert the card, it will go to HSBC. Rather, the request will go to HSBC server, right? And the City Bank will have to send your information to HSBC and ask HSBC to validate the information. Okay. Now um, you know what. This whole thing has to be very secure, first of all. Secondly, HSBC will never allow Citibank to actually go inside their databases and pull out the information. Alright, so how will both the entities communicate with each other? How will Citibank come to know that whether the card details are, are correct or not? And the, how will Citibank pass over the information to HSBC? Look, everything is done with the help of XML documents. Okay, XML documents, they form the basis of this kind of transaction, wherein two different entities want to talk with each other, but they don't want each of each of them to know there's some private information or something, right? So how what will the city bank send to HSBC over here? So when you insert your card and enter the card details and all, so Citibank will send an XML document like this. For example, customer information. To send an XML document, XML document has got tags. Tags like this. The customer info tag is opening over here. It is closing over here. Then it will send the information like this. Name is say Tom. Fine. Then it will send the information like uh, card number. What is the card number of the customer with which he is trying to extract the money. So if the card number tag is opening, it will also be closed. And in between that, it will put the card number, whatever is the card number. right? Then it will send two tags like what is the amount which customer is trying to withdraw from his account. Hold on. And what is the pin of the card? Fine. So it will send this information to HSBC Bank. So this is the kind of XML which will go from Citibank to HSBC Bank. Fine. It will send this information in form of an XML document. So HSBC server, when it receives this information, it will pass this information. Right, and it will send back another XML which will tell Citibank whether the transaction has to be successful or not. Fine, you can save it. I'll uh, save it say in my C drive in a folder called XMLs. Fine, I'll save this XML and in double quotes you write request.xml. Fine, so if I go to my C drive. XML. So this is my request.xml document. If I open up in browser, it will look something like this. Okay. So this XML forms the very basis of web service transaction. Okay. So this is basically a web service. A web service which helps Citibank to, to send information to HSBC Bank. 
Okay, so it will, it's not actually asking HSBC Bank that fine, give me your database username and password and I'll go inside your database and check whether this customer is valid customer or not. It simply hands over this document to HSBC and HSBC will validate it and it will send back maybe an XML like this transaction details. Write a transaction detail tag which opens up and closes. Fine. Probably it can have the name and card number again inside it and another tag known as status. Fail. Fail means do not give customer the money. Some problem is there. Fine. So this XML will be formed by the HSBC bank. So Citibank will come to know by reading this, X, this Citibank ATM will come to know that fine, this XML has been returned, that means that something is fishy, so it will not release the money. So you can you can store this as response.xml. This is the response which comes up from HSBC to Citi. So this becomes response.xml. Alright, fine. So I hope you got the concept. Okay, it's plain transaction, a transaction in terms of documents. One entity is trying to exchange document with another entity. Fine, right? And this kind of transaction is also quite secure. We make it very secure, right? I'll tell you later on how that is made secure. But this is what a web service is. Similarly, when you go to websites, websites like this website make my trip dot com fine when you go to a website like this now what this website does you say that fine I want to go from this trend, this source to this destination on this this date give me the flights so you have all the flights from all the providers right all the airlines this website goes to each and every airline and it gets the information from each and every airline so these are the airlines over here so this is makemytrip.com. So what makemytrip.com does is it goes to each and every of the vendors and gets the flight information and you and it presents in front of you. So how does it communicate with each and every vendor? It communicates with the help of web service. Okay, it communicates with the help of XML documents. Fine. So this is the major use of a web service. Right? Again, in many companies, especially in big banks, right? All those big and old banks they have their old systems implemented in something known as mainframe if you know about mainframe it's a big big huge and very secure database in all the old banks and all the old old companies this database is are used mainframe is used because it's very secure and secondly it's stable so they are using it but the problem arises when the front end system which is suppose made in java language or c sharp language or it's made in ruby any language right when it wants to communicate with this backend how will it do i can connect java c sharp and all to oracle i can connect them to mysql like these all are new databases but but when you have to connect them with mainframe what will you do so again over there when there is no solution you exchange xml documents with the database and that's how with the help of web service you can also communicate with the database okay so this is just a simple example right or a very simple example if google.com has to communicate with yahoo.com it can communicate with the help of web service all right so this web services are becoming very very uh, in demand these days the demand is rising because earlier you know the websites they were individual each and every company had its own website and that's it right now they want to do the business transactions with each other various insurance companies there are hundreds of insurance companies in this world they want to talk to each other over the web so how will they talk to each other so that's done with the help of web service and that's why the demand for this is increasing like anything right and so POI as a tool can be used to test a web service when there is a communication between two entities in form of XML document, SOAP UI is introduced and it can be used to test the communication. Alright, and 
don't think that SOAP UI is only for manual testing. It's not like that. You can also write your automated scripts in SOAP UI. You can have some automation stuff. Your scripts can automatically run, hit the servers, and you can get the data out. So that's what SOAP UI can also SOAP UI can also do that, right? So that's very helpful. Okay, right? So many times people feel that SOAP UI can be only used for manual testing of web services. No, it's not like that. You can also use it for automation of web services. You can write your scripts, you can parameterize them, you can generate reports. Okay, so that's what we'll do in the course, right? This is the course and pre recorded sessions are also there. So you, that's what the main objective of the course is like building a framework, a data driven framework or something using REST or SOAP protocol. So we'll see that. Fine.